everyone. Welcome back to Dad Space, you know, the podcast for dads by dads. And today we have a, a Canadian on the podcast, which makes me so happy because I'm always looking for another Canadian to chat about and to have on the show. And it's exciting to have Deepak on the show. And we're going to talk about his website. He does a lot of great stuff. And uh, yeah, we're also going to be talking about uh, his dad's story. And he's got some stuff to share with us to help us to be healthier dads which is great. So, hey, welcome to the podcast. Glad to have you here. Yeah, thanks, David. I appreciate being here today. Awesome. Tell everybody where you are in this great big Canadian world of ours. I live just west of Calgary. I live out uh, on an acreage here, so uh, close enough that we can drive in for amenities, but far enough that it's nice and quiet. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. That's good stuff. Uh, okay, so we're here on Dad's Base, and what I love about what you do is you help people with their health. I'm on your website while we're chatting. There's not one single moose on your website, by the way, just so you know. No, I might, I might have to remedy that. So t- talk us through the website, talk about what you do and, and how you, what you do in this world to help people. I'd love to start there. Yeah, absolutely. So if, if we have time, we can come back to my backstory to how I got to what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, this, is my, this is not, what I do now is, is not my first career, it's my, it's my second. But yeah, essentially I help, I help, uh, you know, uh, moms and dads, uh, you know, be, you know, change their mindset around aging, you know, so maybe they don't have that same, um, they don't have to have that same experience that maybe they witnessed with their parents or their grandparents of what aging looks like of, uh, you know, maybe s- suffering with something for a number of years or being in a home and all that, that, th- those kinds of things, or at least if you're going to get to that, not have it in your sixties and seventies, have that happen to you in your nineties and hundreds. Uh, so again, work with, work, work with parents to, you know, be more present with their kids, healthier so they can keep up with their kids. And, uh, and just generally, uh, stay younger for longer, uh, that, that, that's essentially what it is. Uh, and then one other thing, uh, since we last talked, uh, David, that's something actually relatively new, if I could just yeah, talk yeah, about please. that very, very quickly. Uh, I find a lot of, uh, I've been, you know, I've been coaching now and doing this sort of thing one way or another for the last eight years. I find a lot of, um, newer, you know, health and wellness coaches, uh, struggle with, uh, the, you know, starting their businesses, uh, getting them off the ground. And, uh, I certainly struggled. I made a ton of mistakes and. So now I've actually have a new program too, where I also help uh, newer uh, health and wellness and spiritual coaches, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, cut those mistakes. I'll learn from Deepak, learn from Deepak's dumb mistakes so that you don't have to make them and accelerate your business uh, faster. So that's, that's an, a new segment. That's something I'm trying to help these people uh, share their zone of genius so they can help their tribes and their communities. So, but, uh, but my, but, but you're right. My, my core is, is helping, uh, helping mom and dads uh, be as healthy as possible. Awesome. Normally we do this at the end of the podcast. We're nowhere near that, but tell us the name of your website as well. Uh, DeepakSaneyHealth.com. Good. And we'll have links to that in the show notes as well. Um, for parents today, what kind of some of the commonalities are you seeing with the people that you work with around health and parenting? There's got to be some kind of strands that kind of tie client to client. And you're like, I see some similarities as I meet with people. What are some of the things yeah, you see? Absolutely. So, you know, I, I'll start with saying that there's, um, we have a lot of misconceptions in, in society about what health looks like. Uh, rightly or wrongly, it's been influenced by a variety, you know, a variety of special interests and that sort of thing. There's a lot of myths uh, or, you know, uh, lexicon we have for the last 40, 50, 60 years that either A, weren't that true to begin with in the first place. Uh, or they've been, you know, new science has come out and actually debunked those things, but we still, people still have these. So part of my role is to just to help educate people and get their mindset around thinking like, look, what you read on, you open the internet and you read something like that's probably not true or it's been twisted. And that's not what the research actually showed or that study actually showed uh, type of thing. So that, that's, that's part of it. But, you know, everyone, whether their moms and dads or not, you know, we have a very uh, stressful society. So, you know, People are stressed, you know, they're not, uh, they're not sleeping well typically. And then there's a lot of hidden sources of stress that people don't even realize, you know, some people will be eating things that, you know, could be quote healthy, but it's not healthy for them. It's not healthy for their, you know, genetic makeup or, you know, even their ancestry and, and, and that sort of thing. You know, I'll just use one, one example, like kale, you know, it's been recommended as this, as this super food or super healthy food. Yeah. Kale is really high in oxalates. If you're sensitive to oxalate, oxalates, like I am, kale is kryptonite to you. So, you know, people have to know these things. So, again, it's all very individualized, but, you know, people are sleeping, people are stressed. There's a lot of hidden sources of stress, a lot of things we're doing to ourselves that we think we're making good choices, 
uh, or we don't know and it's actually harming us. So, you know, just try and educate people on, on those sorts of things as well. Good. And then you mentioned at the beginning when we started talking that you're at a different place now um, with who you are and who you're serving and that you wanted to kind of jump back to more of the origin story of your, your story. Can you take us back there as well? Let's talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, my first career was a CPA. So, uh, you know, account, I did, uh, you know, 20 plus years in uh, corporate finance, corporate accounting and in, in, uh, in, in the corporate world. Uh, I was always someone who who struggled with their health. I was always the chubby kid. Uh, at 18 years old, I was morbidly obese, 100 pounds heavier uh, than I am now. I always struggled with an autoimmune condition. I'd be chronically sick all the time, even as an adult. Uh, you know, I get so sick that I, you know, be four to six weeks at a time. Uh, or you know, I'd be I'd be sick enough. Like I, I'd be I could pretty much almost always still go to work, but like I couldn't like exercise or even like walk with any sort of pace or anything. Cause I'd start coughing so much. So you just be on this roller coaster of sick and wellness. Uh, but what it really came to a head for me was in 2014, I hurt my back, uh, really bad. I had, I, I ended up having no flexion. It means I couldn't bend over at the waist. So that makes, you know, putting on your shoes and socks, very difficult getting in and out of a chair, very difficult. That includes getting, you know, on and off the toilet. Mm. Uh, but the real thing, the, my real low point was uh, my youngest daughter was just a baby at that time i couldn't bend over enough to pick her up out of her crib when she wanted to be picked up so that was that was my low point i didn't recognize it myself at the time uh but in hindsight you know i wasn't golfing anymore i couldn't run anymore i could you know barely move a lot of pain couldn't pick up my daughter i was, I was you know in depression um but I, I just channeled all all that i had into trying to heal my back essentially so i could pick up my kids and, and even my older daughter you know play play with her and and be active and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, I just tried everything that I could to heal my back. And it's unfortunate. I like to say that the Western medical system wasted 18 months of my health, run around through the system, uh, ineffective treatments, misdiagnoses, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I took matters into my own hands, found a, a pretty standard modality, you know, maybe, maybe back almost, oh, I guess that's 10 years ago now, uh, or almost 10 years ago, uh, might've been deemed a little bit alternative, at least here in Canada. Uh, but I found a modality, uh, you know, essentially I had to pay out of pocket to, to heal my back. But in conjunction with that, I also made lifestyle changes, you know, how I slept, nutrition, these sorts of things, um, you know, how I exercised. Um, and lo and behold, not only, you know, it, it was, it took a number of months, but I healed my back, but more importantly, my autoimmune, 60 of the hundred pounds I've lost melted away in just a matter of months, but my autoimmune condition went into remission. I've essentially not really been sick. Uh, yeah, I've had a little sore throat or a little sniffles for, you know, a couple of days here and there, but I essentially have not been sick like I used to be for like, gosh, almost 10 years now. So that was kind of the turning point. But really, of course, most people only see the outside. They don't know our internal struggles, that sort of thing. But, you know, the weight loss, the rapid weight loss is what got people's attention. You know, colleagues, business associates are like, hey, what are you doing? Like, hey, can I, can I take care of a coffee? Can I buy you lunch? Like, tell me, tell me what's going on here. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I'm like, Hey, I just read this, I learned this, read this book, or here's a blog post, blah, blah, blah. So I, you know, I, I really started to enjoy that. And you were, and it was a bit of a funny space where I was at work with the company I was at that, you know, the industry I was in, you know, kind of it is in a bit of a downturn at that time. And I was like, you know, I enjoy helping these people more. And I was always someone who mentored, I coached youth sports when I was younger, et cetera. So like that just kind of is part of, part of me. I said, you know what, maybe, maybe I need to do this. So, you know. Before this term even existed, you know, I, I started a side, you know, side hustle, right? Yeah. That's everyone knows what that is. That nobody knew what that wasn't, you know, back then. Uh, that wasn't a term. But I started, you know, uh, I got some early certifications. Started, uh, you know, you know, evenings and weekends working with people, people who were like me, yeah. weight loss, back pain, weight loss, back pain. But as I evolved myself, and as I came through my journey and see like, what's the potential, like there's no reason, like I can't, you know, live healthily. Uh, you know, controlling my own destiny till 100 and beyond. So I have a publicly stated goal to be a centenarian plus. Uh, so 100, 100 plus. Uh, that's not for everyone. I totally understand it. That's, you know, cool, whatever, whatever's for you. Uh, but as I evolve what I want and how I approach my own health, people got start, uh, start to become drawn to me and are more interested now, again, not just weight loss or pain relief. And that's part of it, but like how to live healthier, how to, how to extend my health span. You know, it's not about lifespan. You know, modern medicine is amazing and, probably keep people alive till 120 plus, but what's the quality of life? Right. You know, do yeah. you want your last 20, 30 years in a home, tubes, et cetera? No, I'm talking about health span. Can we extend our health yeah. span? You know, and, and essentially, you know, the term, you might have heard this term, die as young as possible. Uh, and and not, not like age-wise, but like our body-wise. Yeah. 
uh, you know, type of thing. So, yeah. So then that's kind of how I morph my programs and how I work with my people uh, uh, now. So let's go back to our uh, uh, riveting moose stories that we were sharing. There's no way you could have run from that moose back in the day, struggling health wise the way you were. You weren't you could never do that with the dog. Uh, right. Like you couldn't you couldn't run to that extent. I, when I was when I was in the depths of my pain and everything, I would not have been able to run. No. And honestly, honestly, and and uh, I probably I never thought about those questions. So you know, thank you for bringing this up, David. I've been thinking about we we I, I didn't grow up with a dog, neither did my wife, and have having a dog part of our family is relatively new and has only come in the last few years. I don't think if I was still like that, a dog would even be on the table. Like I, I wouldn't even be able to. Like I mean, I work from I work from home. I work for myself and. You know, and we have a small dog, but, you know, just even picking up a 25 pound dog, like, I don't think I would have been able to do that. Yeah. You know, so we probably wouldn't even have a dog. I wouldn't even been in that position if I, you know, hadn't healed myself. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's kind of an interesting point. I like that. So how important is it to you as a dad to be healthy for your kids, for yourself, for your family? How important it is, is it for you to do that? Because I think some people just kind of resign themselves to, well, this is my life now. I'm not going to be healthy. I'm not going to feel well. I'm going to have a bad back for the rest of my life. That's, oh, well, that's my lot in life. You know, not much I can do about it. And it doesn't sound like that was your mentality in the moment. You're like, I want better for me. How, was import how important is it to, as a dad to be healthy? Uh, well, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to answer this in a couple, two different ways there, for, uh, David. So first off, the first thing I work on with my clients is like finding their, you know, so for me, my, my, my why or my purpose is to never feel like how I did back in 2014. I okay. never want to feel that way again. So that's, that's always my guiding light that guides, you know, and am I perfect? No, of course not. But, you know, that kind of guides my decisions and how I, how I live my life. So when I work with my clients, that's what I really like to get to, uh, at the beginning, like, what is your, why is it, you know, so you can be around, you know, for, you know, little Timmy's, uh, you know, softball games is that you want to walk your daughter down the aisle. Or more importantly, be able to dance at the wedding, have the mobility to dance or whatever the case may be for anyone, right? So yeah. I think that's super important to make people really hone into that because that makes the the decisions uh, a little bit easier down the road when you're trying to make uh, lifestyle changes. I think, you know, all, all parents, but, you know, this is the, this is the dad show. So, you know, and, and we typically are not all, not always, of course, there's all blended families in all sorts of situations, but, you know, typically looked at as the leaders of our family in, in, in some regard. And I think it's super important that we are able to be there, not only physically to like open the jar of pickles or get the, you know, the Christmas decorations down from the top shelf or whatever the case may be, be able to pick up the kids, uh, play with them, teach them how to ride a bike. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I don't, my, my kids kind of got grew out of this, but you know, I used to pace them when they were, when I, when you know, they want to do these like five, these kids, five K runs, stuff like I, I pace them and run with them, you know, and that this sort of thing. I think that's super important. And the other thing I want to mention about it, you know, um, whether with your own kids or in your own family, but also I think if, you know, if you're in a leadership position in your companies or leading a company or, or ma in management, wh whatever the case may be, when you're the healthiest that you can be, you think clearer, you make better bus business decisions. You're more present. You're more present for your employees. You're also more present for your kids uh, when you're not inflamed. And, you know, I, I look back and I'm not proud of it, but like, you know, uh, there was certain times, you know, when I was just like, you know, I, I didn't react how I wanted to react, you know, I was, you know, I, I, in whatever situation, you know, it's kind of like a jerk. Right. But that's, that's the, the pain, right. When you're, when, when you're like in pain, you're icky and then somebody just annoys you, whatever, yeah. you know, and the, the, you know, kind of the default no, uh, no, uh, network comes out and you're, you're, you know, the kind of mammalian brain and you kind of, you know, say something, hurt someone's feelings or, you know, you don't have that split second to like catch yourself and really, act, you know, what's appropriate in the moment because you're all clouded with pain or what, or, or, or sickness or whatever the case may be. So that's certainly, uh, you know, there's obviously personal development work and stuff like that as well that I've done. But, you know, I think we can be more present. We can be the best version of ourselves. And, and, and health is, uh, is, a big, is a big part of that. So during your health journey, who was there for you to look up to? You're now providing this for people today, but... Who was in your corner? Who was your inspiration to kind of walk you through this as you were working your way through this health journey? Yeah, that's, that's a that's a great question. So um, as I went through from the physical point of view, I certainly had a team. I, uh, you know, I, I was working with a couple, you know, and we're trying to figure it out. At first, we're just trying to figure out what is wrong with your back. You know, 
chiropractors and physiotherapists and, you know, uh, my natural, you know, like all, all sorts of things, all, the team. So there was definitely, um, you know, a support in, in that sense. Uh, obviously huge support from, uh, from my, uh, from my wife, you know, my kids were small at that. I mean, they're still relatively young, but you know, they're even smaller then. So huge support from, from my wife, but you know, I'd already gone before the back injury into, uh, a little bit of a, um, really, really interesting performance. So I started following a couple of, you know, uh, people online influencers, if you will, um, from a performance point of view. And then as I was trying to figure out how to heal, once the injury happened, trying to figure out how to heal my back, some of these same people, uh, you know, kind of more, uh, lean into a sort of, uh, advanced, you know, uh, health modalities, you know, uh, some people use the term biohacking, uh, whatever. And these are the people I leaned on. And some of these people have become my mentors now. I've taken their courses. I've met them in person, uh, that sort of thing. So at the time when I was going through it, I didn't, I didn't know them, but they were certainly, uh, you know, uh, someone to just kind of like, it's possible, you know, they're sharing information of new technologies, new modalities, some, you know, a variety of doctors and experts and PhDs who are like working on the type of things that like might, might be able to help me. So that, that was a bit of an inspiration, but, but really, honestly, it was, again, that's why I go back to what I said earlier, like I, where I help my clients with really trying to find that why or that, that purpose. I just had this innate, like, I want to get back. I want to be able to, I don't want to be, you know, not, you know, obviously people have more serious injuries than, than I had, but I didn't want to be someone who couldn't be present, who couldn't you know, pick up my daughter, who couldn't, you know, teach him how to ride a bike, play soccer, you know, kick the ball around, you know, pass the football around in the backyard. I didn't want that. So like it, a lot of it came from, from myself. Um, and, but I understand that's not everyone has that drive. And, and that's why I think having mentors or, or coaches or whatever the case may be is, uh, can be so powerful as well. So somebody who comes to your website goes through and goes, you know, this is, you are the person I need. Um, I reach out to you. What is it like to start working with you? Can you kind of take us behind the curtain a little bit? What is it? What does working with you feel like? I'd like to kind of know that. Absolutely. So there's a couple different ways to work. I mean, most people come in through my group coaching program. It's kind of the entry level. Uh, again, it's group, uh, run that, uh, three or four times a year, so kind of set, set timeline, go over, you know, a variety of topics. So again, starting with the mindset, uh, you know, the, why the purpose, your community, who are your support systems, uh, the, these sorts of things. Uh, of course there's a nutrition piece. There's a movement piece, you know, sleep, stress reduction, all, 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 all the, all the things. But to, I think what your, your question is like, it's very, you know, even though it's a group setting, we get to really know each other really well. Uh, obviously there's intake forms and, and, you know, we get, we get to know everything. And I think it's, it's really important to know what people's, uh, you know, their motivators are. Why have they joined this program? Again, getting back to that, why? Uh, and, and everyone's different and, but they all, the, the community, and again, they're, they're typically smaller cohorts. It's not like there's a hundred people going through at a, at a time. They're smaller. So we get to know each other and some friendships get built between, you know, clients, uh, at this, at the same time, but we're all just here for each other. And then as a community builds, uh, as well. So that's kind of the, how this, the starting point is, is a group coaching program. And then for those people who want to maybe just take it up a notch and really want to go, there's a kind of a hybrid. It's a little bit longer, uh, program where it's group as well, but one-on-one, -on -one, we get a little bit more in depth on people's personal, uh, issues. Uh, you know, uh, you know, really looking deeply at like what their nutrition looks like, what their supplementation looks like, that sort of thing. And then, uh, for, for those who are want to take another step further, and sometimes people come in either way, right? Uh, some people just want to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. That's more of a commitment, both from a time and cost perspective, but now we really get in depth and, uh, you know, we're looking at genetic testing, uh, all sorts of, uh, different, uh, you know, age tests and that sort of thing and really own in on, on people, how they can really optimize themselves. Again, this is not, that's not for everyone, but those are, these are the people who are kind of like me who, you know, maybe want to be centenarians or, 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 you know, at least, uh, you know, optimize their health or their performance, you know, uh, for a longer period of time. So there's one thing about signing up with a, a coach, somebody like you that can definitely help us with our health in that we have expectations of how, what you can do for us, but what are your expectations of a client coming to you for them to be successful? What do I need to bring to our interactions so that I can see the success that I'm looking to get? What's my role in all this? Absolutely. Number one, uh, uh, well, I guess, you know, be a good person, be part of the community and not, you know, not be a jerk off. Obviously, yeah. I think that goes without, without saying, 
uh, you know, o- open-minded, right? There are things that I'm going to say that's like I mentioned earlier, is going to go against probably what many people have heard. Uh, you know, there's more of us who are uh, sharing this and it's getting bigger and bigger, the, the community, but you know, some of it is still contradictory to what you've been told or maybe even what your GP knows. Uh, and that's not, not to poo-poo GPs. It's just it, the information is slow uh, to get out there. You know, they, they, they say that from uh, a new discovery of, of a new modality, whatever the case may be, to get to your frontline GPs off takes 17 years. That's a whole generation of doctors before they're going to actually be part of the, the standard of care. So, you know, let's, let's cut that time in half. So just be an open mind uh, and then also, you know, be, be willing to be curious, ask questions. Uh, you know, how does this affect me? Well, I heard this. I have no problem with my clients and hey, wait a second. I heard this. That's half, you know, probably half the conversation we have is like, no, I understand where you're coming from. I agree if you have this, this, and this, but David, you told me you have this, this, and this. So that yeah. doesn't make sense for you. Right. That makes sense for this person, not for you. Oh, okay. You know, that type of thing. So, you know, be curious, ask questions, be open-minded and, you know, be, be a good person and, and be part of the, c- contribute to the community. Yeah. I love it. Okay, great. And again, we're going to have all the links in the show notes to reach out and to be a part of your community. I'm interested to know too, a little bit more about your dad's story here on Dad Space because I'm trying to, the idea behind the podcast is to encourage men to be better partners, better parents, uh, better in their community, and also be better to themselves, which we're touching on already just in our conversation. But I'm interested in your dad's story. What what are you excited about? What are you learning as a dad? And maybe how are you doing the dad thing differently than what you know or what you knew before having kids? What's your story about being a dad? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first off, a couple of, that's a huge question, Dave. Right? There's so <laughs> many aspects there. I was just thinking, oh, you're going to talk about this. I want to talk about this. Yeah. So first off, you know, and, and not there's no right or wrong here and, and there's no no uh, judgment or blame associated. But like I, me and my wife, we're, we're trying to parent a little bit differently than than we were raised and certainly how I was raised by my dad. And I love my dad very much, but, you know, come from, the, he, he came from a different culture and, you know, these sorts of things. And I think a bit of generational uh, uh, thing as, as well. So, you know, trying to be a different approach. Now I will say as well, um, let, me, let me take a step back. I'm a huge proponent of self-care. We need to take care of ourselves. Um, I spend anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. And you could debate even it's even a bit longer, depending on how you, how you, how you, how you quantify, you know, self-care. Um, but I spend an hour and a half to two hours a day on my own self-care. And some people say, well, that's, that's selfish. You're, you're not spending time with your kids or your wife or the dog even, or whatever the case may be. Or right? it's like, my counter argument is like, if I don't do that for myself, that I don't show up to be the dad I want to be, the husband I want to be, the son I want to be, the son-in-law, you know, the, the, the entrepreneur that I am, et cetera, you know, that type of thing. So for me and part of my self-care is of course, you know, uh, exercise and stretching and again, you know, I've overcome my back injury, but I have to, you know, maintain things so I don't ever get back there. Uh, but also that means like, you know, meditation for me and, you know, quiet time and journaling and that sort of thing. So I really encourage my clients to do that, you know, whether they be men, fathers or otherwise, but that's, that's, that's super important, uh, for me. Uh, and I certainly, and because of that, through my own self demand, self growth, you know, um, hey, do I get angry at my kids all the time? But you know that that uh, how long it takes me that that fuse, if you will, has right. gone much much longer. Yeah. Uh, that type of thing. And the other thing that comes to mind is my as my oldest is uh, she'll be uh, she'll be officially a teenager in uh, two weeks. Oh boy! So and you know she's already in her mind has been a teenager for a couple of years. So it's interesting how that. Uh, I guess with both my kids, but more so my older one, how that, how our relationship dynamic has changed, right? Cause she's wants to spend a little bit more time alone, uh, you know, or with her friends and not so much as the, as our family unit. She, you know, she's got a little bit of a, and she gets this for me. So I totally, I totally t- honor that. Like she's got a bit of a sarcastic humor, mm-hmm. you know, which, which sometimes, you know, like is for the, for the most time it's like, oh, you know, she gives me a zinger back. I'm like, that's a good one. That's a good one. You <laughs> yeah, got me. You got you. But, you know, if I'm not, if I haven't done my work or whatever, I'm stressed and it's like that zinger back might be like, hey, yeah, that's that's disrespectful. Like, what what are you doing here? You know, yeah. so, you know, so again, it, it, it's a work in progress. But yeah, so it's it's interesting how, you know, our relationship or my relationship or how I parent or, how, you know, what we, you know, we together as me and my wife, but, you know, you know, 
how I be a dad is like evolves and we have to be open to that evolve and our kids change and you know, that sort of thing. I never really got that like earlier. And I think it's probably only the last, maybe, maybe the last two years where it's kind of like, you know, we have to like give them a little bit more leeway and a little bit more, uh, runway to, for them to find themselves and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, again, it's, it's like, you know, what did I wish I had? Or, you know, when I was, you know, I was like, oh gosh, I can't remember from like, you know, 30 years ago, you know, you know, type of thing. And it's, and our, and our society and our world has completely changed. Right. We didn't have social media and all the stuff to deal with now. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a learning process, but, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it's a, it's a fun, it's a fun dynamic. And, uh, I honestly can't wait till my, my oldest, uh, or both my kids, but, you know, start driving and some of that freedom that comes with driving and, and, and responsibility. And I'm kind of actually looking forward to that. So. I think as a dad, the, when you're dealing with your oldest, if you have multiple children, the oldest, you, as a dad, you're learning as you're parenting. Like, it's not like you've done this before. This is your first child and you're learning what it is to be, you know, having your child become a teenager. You've never done this before. You really haven't experienced this. You have no point of reference other than books or podcasts or uh, other people who have parented in your family or your circle. You really haven't done this before. So you're learning as you go. And it's kind of expected that you just know how to do what you need to do in the moment with really no preparation. Again, going back to walking out of the hospital with my child, my oldest, nobody followed me out of the hospital, you know as a new parent with my firstborn, they just assume you know what you're doing. So have a nice day. I, 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 right? assume, I assume your wife came with you. Yeah, too. She, she did. She was there. Yeah, okay. she, <laughs> she showed up for that. Yeah, she was great. Um, but yeah, the, the idea that nobody follows you home, nobody checks up on you. Nobody makes you do a test, you know, answer these five questions and let you leave with your baby. Nope. They're just like, see you, you know, good luck. You're like, how am I supposed to learn how to be a, a new father, the father of a teenager, a father of a 20 year old, you're learning as you're doing it in real time. And I think we need to give ourselves a little bit of grace as dads that you're not going to have them all perfect. You're not going to have the answer to everything. So don't even try, but just do your best with what you know and pull in from different resources, listen to other dads and develop yeah. community. That's where I find my strength. Yeah. You know, it's funny you should mention that, David. I just uh, connected with uh, probably one of the one of the friends I've known the longest. I think we met in grade three or grade four and uh, and we you know went all the way through high school and everything together. And he lives in a different province now and I don't uh, don't talk to him too often. But we did get a chance to connect uh, just uh, just after Christmas. So just, you know, a few, few months ago. And uh, and he had kids young and we had kids a little bit late. So he already has like adults <laughs> like, you know, like they're out of the house and you know, university and that sort of thing. Uh, so it, it's been interesting from afar, you know, social media and, you know, the odd connection here and there over the years uh, of like seeing his relationship with his kids are so much older. Like we're the same, I mean, he's a year older than me, but we're essentially the same age and his kids are like so much older than mine. And like, he's already gone through these things. So like, yeah, again, those resources, right? Yeah. Uh, and someone who's of the same generation. I think it's a bit different, like, you know, talking to our parents or our aunts and uncles of how they, you know, raise how they did parenting i think you know there's something to be learned from that but also i think people who are of your own generation because it's, it's different things have changed right it's again social media et cetera, et cetera. like it's totally different so i i think a variety a variety of sources is, is is good for anything yeah yeah and just build your community pull in from different resources you get different perspective and again that's the whole thing about you don't know what you don't know so find out those things that you don't know and have that conversation with others and you'll find a different perspective and your ben your family's going to benefit. You're going to benefit. Your children are going to see a different part of you and they get to see you as a human being and that you don't know the answer to the question, but I'll figure it out. We'll work on it together and we'll come up with an answer. So you don't always have to be Superman. You can, you can acknowledge your kryptonite I guess, and say, yeah, I, in this situation, I have no idea. I've never done this before. So don't be afraid to, to lean on that. The one thing we talked about in our little pre-chat before we uh, got to today was you mentioned you had a story around something that happened to you in the past in the hospital and you wouldn't give me a lot of detail about it. You're like, just write that down because maybe we'll cover it in our episode together. So I'm, I have it on my sheet. I've been curious about this. Since, yeah, since we've happy to share about it. it. And, yeah. and, and, and I, 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 I'm open to sharing it and I don't talk about it overly too often, but again, it's it would not one of my finer points. So 
again, rewind back. This is to my, my, uh, before I hurt my back, this is, you know, 2011, my, my oldest daughter, uh, was born and, you know, I had just probably six, six, maybe eight months ago had, uh, gotten a promotion at the company I was working at, at that time. And I was now, my, it was my first role in management and I was really trying to prove myself and all this, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And so then, uh, and, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, luckily at that company, they get five days of paternity leave, uh, you know, for that sort of thing. Uh, so, you know, we, we, you know, my wife ha- 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 had my daughter and, uh, and, you know, I was, I was so in that, you know, at, at, again, 2011, I'm unhealthy, I'm overweight, I'm stressed out. I don't know any of the technique or I don't, I might've known some, but not, certainly not all, and I certainly wasn't applying them. Like all the things I, I work on with my clients, uh, I was not doing, mm-hmm. I was not doing these things. And I was so on that mindset of like climbing the corporate ladder to be that resource, to be that superman, to provide in that sense from a monetary point of view. Uh, that, so I did take my five days of paternity leave, but I spread it all out. I remember my wife is in the hospital. We she had given birth, and you know she's just she's resting there, and and then she's sleeping, and the baby's sleeping, and I'm there, and I'm doing work. I'm sitting there, I'm doing work, and I'm like, oh, she's quiet. I go out in the hall, and I'm doing work. I'm like, you know, in hindsight, I was like, what the hell am I doing? Yeah, it, it didn't it matter. Why did I think that you know trying to prove something to my bosses or, or this you know the senior management team that I was going to give me the next promotion or that or that that next that year's bonus or something that's a bunch of BS. Yeah. I was so dumb. One of my greatest regrets was uh was was doing that and not being more present. I, I didn't even know how to be present really, uh, I think, you know, and honestly. And then uh yeah, and then like I said, I took my five days, but I spaced them. I was like, oh, there's an important meeting. So I'm gonna go into work today and then I'll take tomorrow off. And like I should have just so when, when my second daughter came along, I was at a different company and they didn't have quite as generous policy. Uh, and I just said, this is non-negotiable. Like we're, 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 this is part, if you want me to hire me, yeah. uh, cause again, uh, we, we knew the baby was coming when, when we were, and then I was like, uh, you can keep it on the down low or whatever, but I want five, uh, you know, paternity days and I'm going to take two weeks vacation. So I'm taking three weeks off and I'm, I'm just putting all the, or this is not happening there. And they're like, okay. So for my second child, I took three weeks off. And just stayed at home and did all the things and helped with my older one while my wife was recovering and all that sort of thing. And that was like such a better decision. So again, that first story uh, is like probably one of my most embarrassed, you know, most embarrassed. Uh, that's how I acted uh, and, and not, not, not proud of how that, but I didn't, I didn't know any better. And I've certainly known more since. And again, through a lot of, you know, knowledge and growth, but also the self work of, you know, how to be more present and, uh, and that sort of thing. So that, that's, I, I sometimes like to share that story just to, Probably there's some dads who are listening who like maybe see themselves in that pre that that older version of VPAC and nobody has to be like me how I am now, but hopefully there's some some insight or or some inspiration there to like maybe look at how things a little bit differently. I like that. So you know that's that's the kind of stories I wanted to hear on dad space. Is that there's somebody listening to this today in the hospital about to become a dad. They're gonna walk the hall, get the scrubs on, walk into a room and hear somebody call them dad for the first time today and they feel completely unprepared they have <laughs> there's no one in their corner to look to they feel alone and then to hear you say be present like work and wait like don't miss this opportunity or you'll regret it i i have all my kids out of the house and i would say to any dad that's frustrated with the clutter and the noise and the busyness of life with kids in the home there's going to be a day like me when you won't lock the front door and go to bed knowing that all the kids are under one roof because they've gone on to school, they've gone on in life, and they're no longer going to be home. You're not going to have that moment ever again. So I'll never have that for my three kids because they're all out of the house. So right. just my wife and I. So cherish the moments of the kind of the mundane, the things that seem like they're a lot of nothing in the moment because those days are not always going to be there. You think about it, 17 years roughly, you know, with your kids, 17 summers, 17 birthdays, 17 whatevers, and then they're on to something else. That's not a lot of time when you look at it over the period of time. So don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry to to see your kids grow up quickly. Can you just move? Let's go. Come on, get bigger, go faster, slow down. 
David, there's a stat and it might be changing a little bit with, you know, the economy and more kids having to come back in living with their parents and everything. But essentially the stat is, um, this is maybe a couple of years old now, but that 80% of the time you're going to spend with your parents is before the age of 18. Wow. 80% of the time you're wow. spending with your parents. So like really cherish, you know, it goes both ways, both the parents cherishing their kids, but also the kids cherishing their parents as well. Um, and that's something that's really as both me, my wife and I, as our, as our parents are getting older and starting to have health issues and that sort of thing, it's like, that's really like how much more quality time do we have with them for yeah. family vacations and that's that sort of thing. Can I share uh, oh, please. one more, uh, one more tidbit and then one more funny story. I think yeah, I yeah. the audience will find, so I was going to go back to the hospital for that, for that first time dad. So the, the one tidbit at first is, uh. Um, when you, if you're, if, if you've taken those, you know, the classes, the pre-baby classes and those type of thing, um, you know, like, you know, how to hold the baby, you know, all of how to change, you know, all that kind of stuff. They don't teach you like what it's like to cut the cord. Nope. I, I had no idea. I, I, I was just like, I knew I wanted to do it and they handed me the scissors and like, I don't know like how thick this is or how much, te- how much pressure I have to give or like, like anyway, anyway, it, that worked fine. But that's a, like. There's got to be some way they can put that in there. Yeah, um, come on. But and and a lot of that. Here's here's a, here's the funny story. So again, with my with my first first daughter, she never cooperated during any of the ultrasounds. We had no idea if we were having a boy or girl. Really? And, and I, you know, it got to a point where like we and we wanted to know, but it got to the point where it's like this is just silly. After the fourth time, like no, she's turned this way, and we can't or or it. They don't know, right? Yeah. Like they're turned this way. All, all we're getting is a bum shot. We don't, you know, you know. Uh, type of thing. So when, so we're like, okay, yeah, it got to the point where it's like, this is ridiculous. We'll just be whatever it is. We just want a healthy baby. Boy, girl, doesn't matter. Um, so, uh, anyway, when my wife, uh, gave, uh, birth, it was a very busy day at the hospital. The doctor actually never came to deliver. One of the nurses had to deliver because they just never made it in, in time. Wow. So I'm, I'm right there and the nurse is delivering the baby. And of course, you know, the baby comes out with fluid and blood and all that yeah. sort of, sort of thing. And the nurse, has her hand underneath the baby's bum and in between her her legs is like her gloved finger, but all covered in fluid and just like the tip of her finger sticking out. So she's like, congratulations, it's a girl. And I'm like, I just see her finger right in that spot. I'm like, you know, first, you know, <laughs> half a second instance, like I'm pretty sure that's boy parts. Uh, and then and then I kind of, oh, oh, then I realize that's her finger, you know, like the type of thing. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of my, one of my uh, kind of funny stories where I was like, you know, we don't know what is it. It's like you have a you have a girl. I'm like, that's a boy. <laughs> Can we get a second oh, opinion? No, that's a girl. Yeah, right. yeah. that's okay. a girl. That's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. See, that's the thing. So you, again, yeah, I had the same experience. I had no idea what to expect walking into that room. But I think the biggest moment, and I I, I say it a lot, is when the doctor looks at us, looks at me, and says, "A, uh, you're not the priority here. So if you pass out, you pass out. No one's helping you. So <laughs> stay out of the way." Um, but when, when the doctor looked at me and it's like, congratulations, dad, that was the first time anybody's ever called me that before. And I was completely unprepared for that part because again, I've called people that I call my dad that, but no one's ever spoken those words to me and it was official. And I'm like that moment of overwhelm and excitement all at one big moment and, I just want the dads that are listening, whether you're going to have a baby soon or you you are a dad now, just remember that moment and ingrain that in your mind because the, to have a baby is one thing, to, but to be a dad is another thing. You know, that's that's a high calling, I think. And we have a lot to live up to on behalf of our kids. And I think to what you do with people to be able to do it in a healthy way is something that we can, that's a gift we can give our family that goes beyond the money that we put into the bank, the food on the table, but to show up and be that healthy dad without the short fuse due to our health concerns, everything you yeah. talked about. So I love what you do for, for people and Thank I you. would love for them to connect with you again. So before we go, I know we kept you long, but talk us through the website and maybe a starting point. Um, we we'll reach out to you. What do, what Where do we start? Yeah, kind David, of, yeah. I, th- I, I, I love for people to show up to the website. I think the best thing is actually I have a free gift Good. for your audience. And we'll, we'll put the link there. Sure. Uh, deepaxinhealth.com forward slash freebie. It's a guide. Uh, it has kind of seven seven healthy habits that people can get into. And so a little, little bit of, uh, you know, explanation of why it's important. 
and then a 30 day tracker. So oh. here's my advice. People don't do all seven at one time. Pick one, maybe two, track it for 30 days, but resonates with you. It's probably going to become a lifelong habit. If it doesn't, that's fine. Either way, then go back and pick another one and try that for 30 days. So get the people to slowly build, you know, healthy habits for their healthy aging and for their, their longevity. So, uh, I, you know, grab that guide, uh, that puts you, uh, you know, into my ecosystem. And that's probably the best way for people to sort of, uh, figure out what I'm all about and know what I'm doing. Like, you know, I drop content every day. Uh, so you know, there's always, there's always something. Okay. And where are you most active on social media? Uh, probably LinkedIn and Facebook. Uh, okay. but again, yeah, I, 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 you know, to my audience, uh, I, I, you know, direct email to my audience, uh, five days a week, sometimes okay. six, awesome. depending on what's going on, uh, type of thing. So again, yeah, grab that guide, join the ecosystem and you'll kind of learn, uh, what, what I'm all about and, and my, my philosophy on health. I love it. And everything there, all the links to social media, everything is on your website, which is awesome. And, uh, again, I just appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your journey and helping dads and helping, helping our community. Thank you for all the stuff you do. No, I, I, I appreciate that, Dave. And I, and I want to thank you because I think this is one one space where, uh, you know, yesterday at, at the time of this recording, I know it's going to release, yesterday was International Women's Day. And right. that's fantastic. Again, I have many women in my life and three that live in my in my household. And you know, when, I, when we got our dog, he's, he's a male. It was good to get a little testosterone more in, in the house. <laughs> uh, but, you know, sometimes, sometimes to our own fault, we put all this armor on. Uh, I, you know, dad needs need need recognition as well not, yeah. not just not just the mom so i appreciate that uh, what you're trying to do here with this podcast as well and i appreciate you having me on yeah and it's great value for all of us and there's a lot for us to consider and maybe listen back to the episode again so again thank you so much for doing this and everybody as always all the information is in the show notes and uh deepak thank you so much for making time to do this with us appreciate it thank you appreciate it my friend awesome. Hey, thanks for listening to Dad Space today. I'm so thankful that you were here for this episode. If uh, you like the show, please let another dad know. Hey, <laughs> that kind of rhymed. Anyways, uh, share the episode out with somebody in your circle who would love Dad Space. That means so much to us here for our guests who donate their time to be on the show. And we just want to see this grow. So... Again, another rhyme. Oh, wow. Anyhow, I <laughs> um, think I need to write a song or something. Thank you for being here for with Dad Space. And again, looking forward to the next episode. Look forward to having you here again with us. And if we can help you in any way, if you have a great guest idea for the show, a topic that we you would love us to cover, we would love to do that here on Dad Space. So thanks for listening and thanks for being part of the community. And to you, Dad, thank you for listening. And thank you for sharing Dad Space. Catch you on the next one. Take care. So, hey, if you're looking for some bonus content, you're still here, right? Yeah. So, uh, we started the podcast talking about moose. And you're like, Dave, what's a moose? Uh, if you're not in North America, you might not know what a moose is. But uh, we had some moose stories we shared at the beginning of the podcast. We thought we'd put it here at the end. So if you want some bonus content and you want to learn more about moose and uh, people have been who have been chased by moose, which apparently we both have, here's a little extra content for you to make you smile and to make you aware of moose. And again, no moose have been harmed in the making of this podcast. Here we go. And, and I have a moose in my backyard almost what, at least once a week. And uh, if we have time, uh, you know, I can tell you about uh, the story when Earlier this winter when uh, me and my dog were chased by a mama moose. Okay, so I've been chased by a moose as well. I thought I was the only one in the world. But this is great. So we can swap stories. But let's, let's start with it because some people listening are like, A, what's a moose? Because they're listening in another country and they don't have those. Um, but And then how big these things are, I was amazed when I was chased. But tell us the moose story. Come on, it's a great way to start. Oh, yeah. Okay, so for those who might not know... Uh, I think you got moose all over North America or the Canada, U.S. for sure. Um they're very large animals. Uh, even the female, grown female, is going to be larger than a horse. Uh, or, you know, big as a Clydesdale. Maybe if people are familiar with Clydesdale, it's probably about that size. A little bit different body shape, skinnier legs, but that tall, that pr pretty big. Uh, so they they come all, all the time. Again, I live I live uh, kind of uh, out in the country and, and that sort of thing. Uh, there's only like 12 houses on our street. And, you know, we got big, big two, two acres. So the houses are, are, are still spaced out uh, on the street. So. Uh, it was early, it was earlier this winter, 
It's around eight o'clock. My kids had gone out to catch the bus. Luckily, the bus stop is just the next door neighbor's house. Uh, and, and so that, that was convenient. So I was walking my dog and we live kind of at the bottom of a hill, sort of, you know, I'm walking him up the hill to do his business or whatever. And, uh, and then we kind of got th- three quarters of the way up and turn around time to come back because the bus is going to be here soon. And, uh, and then he starts growling at something. So I turn around and there's a little baby moose that darts out from one set of trees on one side of the road and runs across the street into the other trees on the other side of the road. And I was like, oh, cool, baby moose. I'm yelling to my kids at the bottom of the hill, like, baby moose, baby moose, look, baby moose. And they're oh, like, they can't get me, right? And then, like, okay, whatever, it's gone now. We keep walking. And then my dog turns around and starts growling again. And I'm like, I turn around and sure enough, mama moose had come out. And I'm like, I don't know why I didn't think of this, but there's a baby moose. There's going to be a mama moose. So right. mama moose is just staring me down. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. So I turn around. I'm like, come on, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. We start walking br- briskly. And I turn around over my, sh- look over my shoulder. Uh, and it starts, uh, it's not full out running at me, but it's starting to gallop, you know, quickly to me. So I'm like, so I just turn around. I just start sprinting. So again, this is winter time. Got like, I'm full winter gear, snow pants, winter boots, like the whole deal. I start yelling at my kids. I'm like, run in the house. Run in the house. They, I don't know if they didn't hear me or they just, they, they didn't move at all. Anyway, so me and me and the dog are just booking it, trying to get back to our house. We're about two houses away. Full on sprint. In the meantime, the bus at the top of the hill comes around the corner to come pick up my kids. And uh, so the bus driver is just like, basically see, see, watching me like, run really crazy with a, a mom who was chasing me. So anyway, long story short, we, we, we run around kind of like we've got big hedges, sort of around the hedges and run into the sort of little alcove, kind of our side door. And uh, I didn't know this at the time. I, I'm glad I know now because I'll handle it better. But uh, moose have like terrible eyesight. So if they kind of lose sight of you, they just kind of lose you completely. Uh, so basically, I, we kind of tucked into our alcove and it just ran between our house and the neighbor's house where my, my kids were and they just ran off or whatever uh, into the, and we lost it. Uh, anyway, so then I just, like, my heart's pounding, and, like, I'm just, like, going to calm down, and I look at my kids, by the time the bus pulls up, they just get on the bus, and they drive off, like, no big deal, go to school. And uh, I found it after my kids told me afterwards that the bus driver was like, wow, your dad's a really fast runner. <laughs> you know? So, anyway, but here's the here's the kind of a little bit f- funnier part. So, kind of calm down a bit. I'm like, okay, buddy, like, you got to do your business before we go inside. So, we're walking around, walking around the yard, walking, you know, again, we have a large property. Uh, and he's not, he's not doing anything. I'm like, what, what, like, why aren't you going? So we finally come back around and then, you know, again, it was winter, but uh, the, the driveway had been shoveled, right? So the driveway's dry. And I realized there's a streak of liquid down. And I was like, mm. oh, that's why he doesn't have to go because he did go. He literally was running and peeing <laughs> at the same time. So I was like, oh, okay, you already went, did, you already did your business. Okay, let's just yeah. go in the house. So anyway, that's my funny, uh, now it's funny, uh, story of being chased by a, a moose uh, earlier this winter, by a mama moose earlier this winter. So I was chased by a younger a younger moose. I was on my bike as a kid, and I came up to this corner. I was turning right on my bike, and all these cars were stopped. And I'm like, what the heck? And it's like northern Ontario, a small little tiny town. And all these people staying in their cars, and nobody's moving. So I ride up beside them, and everybody's kind of waving at me like, no, no, no. And I'm like, like looking at the cars, like whatever. I turn the corner, hit my brakes, and there's a moose standing in front of me, like 10 feet away from me, looking at me. And it's way bigger than I am. And it starts to walk towards me, like slowly. And I'm like, back up, back up. And now everybody in the cars are freaking out. So I turn around and I start riding away on my bike and it's full on gallop behind me. And we go by a guy and he's cleaning his car in the driveway. He has his head in the car, cleaning up. And the, myself and the moose go through his carport into the back back part of his property. And he pulls his head, hits his head, like in the movies, hits his head on the roof. He's like, what? what's going on? So anyways, I got away from the moose, but those things are fast. They're really, really fast. And my one of my friends calls them swamp donkeys because they're not really that smart. But yeah. um, but they're huge. They're just humongous. Yeah, so, I, again, don't, I don't think they really have a natural predator. Maybe a big pack no. of wolves or something maybe can take us one that's sick or, or small or something. Down. But otherwise, besides humans hunting them, they don't have a natural predator. Okay, since we're on the moose story, I have two more really quick ones. So, okay, let's this, go. This, this is a new moose podcast. This, this, this just actually happened day before yesterday. So, again, uh, morning walk, uh, taking the dog to do his business, come around the corner behind our house. 
Uh, so kind of a sharp, you know, 90 degree corner going around and boom, there was a smaller female there, uh, like just right there, just standing right there. So like, you know, probably at eight, eight, 10 feet away. So we just quickly backed away, just turned it on and like, it didn't bother, just kept munching away on its, on our, on destroying my bushes and stuff like that. So that's one, uh, this happened l last winter. Uh, our neighbor, uh, is a member of the local, of the provincial government here. Uh, so for those Americans, you know, the be, be equivalent to your state government. Uh, and that, at, uh, not at that time, but at one point, no, actually at that time, they were actually the minister of transportation. So there was a moose. So basically the house next door to me, right. And the house where my kids pick up the bus, yeah. um, just licking the salt off of their car. <laughs> so again, yeah, for those Americans, we, we, at least here we, we gravel, but we, you know, so gravel the roads, we salt the roads, you know, it just depends what the conditions are. So this moose is licking the salt off of their car. And I thought that was hilarious that the minister of transportation who's in charge of salting the roads is having their car be the salt licked off by a moose. So anyway. <laughs> there you go. So if you want to attract moose, go put salt on your car. Yeah. I mean, not a good idea to put salt on your car. But anyway, so welcome to the moose podcast. Yeah. All things moose. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Here today. I love it. It's good. See, you know, those are good stories. Now, somebody listening in, you know, uh, Australia would be like, what? What are you two talking about? So, it's good. I love it. That's good stuff. Uh, okay, so we're here on Dad's Base. And what I love about what you do is you help people with their health. I'm on your website while we're chatting. There's not one single moose on your website, by the way. Just so you know, 